and here with a question in topic 10.1 on field diagrams. We're asked to draw the electric field lines and the equipotential surfaces for the following charge configuration. One positive charge, one negative charge. Uh, I think we can just imagine these as circles. Okay, so a couple of things about field lines. We know that the field lines represent the direction and the magnitude of the force on a test positive charge in the field. So if I put a positive charge over here, I can expect that the positive charge is going to push away on it stronger than the negative charge will attract. So it's going to get pushed out of the field. Similarly, on the other side, if I put a, pos a test positive charge in, it's going to get attracted in by the negative charge stronger than the positive charge can repel it away. Things start to get a little, or, or similarly, before it gets tricky, we'll, we'll do the middle. In the middle, if I put a test positive charge, it's going to get pushed away from the positive charge, attracted to the negative charge, straight over. But then things start getting a little bit trickier when we look above and below this line. If I start with a positive test charge here, it gets pushed away by the positive charge. But the further it gets away from the positive charge, the weaker that force gets. Meanwhile, the force from the negative charge is remaining more or less constant. And so it actually gets pulled over by the negative charge until this tipping point where the negative star charge starts to take over. The force from the negative charge starts to pull the positive test charge in towards itself. The same thing happens on the other side. Similar things happen at lower altitudes. And way out here, similar things happen just on a much larger scale. Always going into the negative charge, away from the positive charge. Away from the positive charge, in towards the negative charge. So in green, what we have here are the field lines. They represent the force. We want to draw the field lines and the equipotential surfaces. So let's go to the equipotential surfaces. Equipotential surfaces are always perpendicular to the field lines. They never intersect with the charges, so we're going to get circles or circle-ish shapes around the charges. The other thing is that the force on a charge gets stronger the closer you get to the charge, and we know that that relates to the potential gradient. That means the distance between the potentials, the potential surfaces, is going to get smaller the closer you are to the charge. So we might start in close, we might stay in close, but as we get further away, the separation between the equipotential surfaces might increase. Same thing happens on the other side. Start in close, stay in close, but then we might start spreading out a little bit. We might continue to spread out even more. All right, while we wait for that lag to catch up, maybe take a think about what this diagram looks like. What's a good mnemonic device you could use to describe this? Um, well, it, it looks a bit like it's trying to hypnotize you, for one. Um, so we might think of it as... Or maybe we can think of the, the circles, the red circles, as uh, sound waves. And so what I see is if I draw in... If I draw in a, uh, a line along the axis of symmetry of this graph, a vertical line, I see a spider standing on a mirror screaming at you. So sound waves are coming out. He's standing on that mirror and he's really angry about being on that mirror. He's confused. He sees his, he sees his uh, uh, mirror image in the mirror and he's screaming at it. Ah, I don't understand what's going on. He's matching every one of my movements. Well, that's silly, but... You can come up with your own mnemonic device for, for what this pattern looks like. Um, it's one of many patterns that you'll have to be able to either produce or memorize. So a mnemonic device might help you keep track of the different patterns.